a six-seater performance monster behind us another six-seater performance car that we are going to be reviewing this one here is a bit cheaper than the other one that we reviewed though from Dodge the Durango SRT and a bit slower as well we're looking at about a $58,000 price tag but a 400 horsepower twin turbo v6 and uh, let's get to the video guys the Explorer in the ST lineup is new to Ford the whole concept of entering that performance lineup in the ST segment is a new thing to Ford. We just came out with that Edge ST. Now we have the Explorer ST in that 2020 model year. Some cool stuff, cool tech. Let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. And if you guys think this is a little bit too big for you, just be sure to check out our Edge ST video as well. All right, now let's get to the video. 2020 Explorer, guys, we are on an all new platform this year. They move their focus back to the rear wheels. We are rear wheel drive focused, even in those all wheel drive models, guys. What that did is it gave them the ability to push that rear wheel back, which gives them more sitting position. Guys, it also just adds for more capability. <laughs> and I personally think anything that's rear drive focused is a better driving experience. <laughs> the best and easiest way I can describe it is is more of a, a performance or a truck feel versus more of a, a, a minivan or car feel when a, a car has a front wheel drive focused or all wheel drive system. So your, your uh, Honda Pilots, your Toyota Highlanders, those are front wheel drive focused. The Explorer used to be as well there for a little bit. There are three engine options for this year Explorer. The first one is the just basic inline four that you're gonna find in your Mustangs and many other Ford models. The next one's a 3.3 liter with a little bit of hybrid help. And the next one is this here, three liter twin turbo V6 that we're gonna find in the ST model. So by design, the ST is obviously the fastest, most performance driven Explorer you can get. Guys, this isn't just a sticker on the back or the front grill of the Explorer. The SVT, formerly the uh, special vehicle team from Ford, which is no longer in existence, guys. We now have the Ford Performance nameplate that is put into the DNA of anything with that ST lineup. In the Explorer's case, that is gonna give us that 400 horsepower twin turbo V6 with that 415 pound feet of torque which is gonna bring this three row SUV to 60 miles an hour in about 5.3 seconds in a quarter mile in 13.9. That's pretty darn good for Ford's first attempt at a performance SUV, guys. ST's gotta stop, and indeed it does, 114 feet to uh, 60 to zero, and that would be uh, around five feet longer than a Dodge Durango SRT, and that would also be about seven feet shorter than the standard uh, XLT. So obviously we get that three liter twin turbo that's putting out substantially more performance than the other Explorer engine options. What else does that ST badge get you? Guys, obviously we got this great strut bar. We are also taking some of the items uh, from the police interceptor Explorer uh, that's stiffening up the suspension uh, with the sway bars, springs, stuff like that. It does handle pretty darn good. I will say at speeds, more so than at uh, lower speeds. You can feel the weight a little more when you're at a lower speed, but when you're zipping down the road, she, uh, she hugs the corners pretty good. Guys, I'm a huge fan of the redesign, both on the exterior as well as the interior. I will be honest, my very first impression looking in the window before even entering the Explorer, I was turned off by the... Uh, uh, vertical display. It almost looked like it was just pieced in there. However, when I got in the driver's seat and saw it lit up and doing its thing, I'm actually a pretty big fan of it. It's laid out very well. We'll get Austin to talk about that in a few minutes. I'm going to talk about the sitting comfort, the seats, 
uh, and we're gonna go back through all three rows in the next minute here, guys. Seats are very comfortable. I love the steering wheel. <laughs> I love the thicker steering wheels that have uh, some personality and character to them. Uh, the ST Explorer is no exception. Seats are very comfortable, great controls on the side here. Uh, you can get exactly where you need to be. Guys, at six feet tall, 220 pounds, this is where I'm comfortable. Let's see what that back seat's like, okay? <laughs> It's not where you need it to be, I can tell you that right now. So as you can see, you can adjust the back seat to go forward and back as needed. This particular model right now, we have two captain's chairs. There's gonna be like a $495 option, I believe, to actually have that bench in the back. I don't think it's out quite yet, but it's coming really soon is uh, what I remember reading here. So guys, obviously I have this back seat now back all the way with that front seat where I'm comfortable. You can see I'm, I'm completely comfortable. I have my own adjustable armrest to my side uh, down in the floor. We'll get that on video quick. We just have some cup holders. That's a huge difference between the aviator and this. We do have that same one touch feature that's in the aviator. This is something that's very similar in the, uh, like, like the Honda Pilot has a very similar touch the button once the seat gets out of your way for you so you can get into that third row. <clears throat> so guys, getting into the third row, uh, there's not too much effort needed uh, pulling the seat back. There's, again, not a big deal. <clears throat> hey, Austin, you want to grab that seat and actually put it back on the tracks for me? Back on the tracks for you? Yeah, sure let's, let's, uh, let's throw her back here and see what it really feels like when that person's Boom. comfortable. Just okay. Split it back. So now that is back all the way. Um, so if there's not someone in there, that seat locks into place when you pull it up. Um, what I can say is my knees are now touching that seat, <coughs> excuse me, with that middle seat uh, back all the way. And like any third row seat, guys, I am down low. My knees are up high. It's kind of every third row out there is the same deal. It's comfortable, but uh, I wouldn't want to be in a very long road trip back here by any means. So as you guys can see back there, there is a small amount of ambient lighting throughout this entire interior. The door handles is one of the places for that, as well as here. You can see that there's a nice speaker grill, some nice white stitching that's in those back seats as well. And these nice front seats are pretty sweet as well. They got some nice bolsters to them, got the ST badge stitched into them. They're, uh, they're a nice looking seat and they're extremely comfortable as well. Now let's really hop in here and see what's going on. So as soon as we can, we're gonna get in here, you get a nice cool little mountain going on up here. Look at this. It's kind of cool looking. And we're gonna start it up. Get your Ford Performance logo up there. This starts shaping itself. It's pretty cool looking, I'm not gonna lie. Now this is what I was talking, or Todd was talking about earlier, how this looked a little corny, but now that it's on, you see it actually looks pretty dang nice. Now right before we get to this display and this display, let's talk about our storage in here. So. As you can see here, we have the shifter that you turn to put it in drive, park, all that sort of stuff. We have a brake hold button right here. So that means you can be you can press that and then you can just push the pedal down. And then when you're at a complete stop, the car will just hold itself there rather than having to hold the brake pedal. Right below that, we have our park assist. We will show you a video of that in a bit. Auto start, stop, hill descent, traction control, and our drive modes, which I'll get to you once we get to the displays. We have a little bit more storage in here, which is nice, a USB Type-C, a USB, as well as the cigarette port. Now, let's get to the center console, a little removable piece, extra storage, another cigarette port, lots of room in here. Now, let's get to the displays. Right in the displays, it's pretty self-explanatory, it gives you all the options down here. Uh, just on your home screen, it'll show navigation at the same time, your phone if you have it hooked up, as well as the music you're currently listening to. Audio, it's obviously all music. You can rewind if you've been on one station for a little bit. You can rewind again, which is kind of a cool a cool feature. Phone, just your average phone, all navigation here. We can go to our apps, and then we can go to our settings. Our settings, there is quite a few of them. Check this out, guys. This is a Ford, okay? This is a Ford, and... We have driver and passenger 
massaging seats. That is right, guys. We have massaging seats in the driver and passenger. Uh, Todd and I were using them on our drive today, which you will see in a little bit here, and they work extremely well. They're, they're very comfortable. They keep you awake as well as just straight up comfort in the first place. All right, let's move up into these displays. So up here, you're gonna see that you have your speedometer with a tachometer right around it. If we turn off our lane departure warning, this will actually slide to the center if that's why you're wondering why it's to the left. Over here, we have just some awesome features you can go through just to show you what's going on. There's also the same calm, uh, calm screen feature that we saw on the Aviator. Just It'll just not show anything there and it's quite calm in case you're very stressed out or something. Then of course, tire pressure and just all everything that's going on with the vehicle, you can display where that calm screen is. Now let's move up to the center stack display. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have the massaging seats as well as the ambient lighting I mentioned. So here's the color options for the ambient lighting. It's not visible at the moment and not to be a hater or anything, but the ambient lighting in Fords is not the greatest. How brilliant is it that we have our wireless phone charger right here? It stays out of view of the driver's hands. Meanwhile, you get to charge your phone. It's a very easy, convenient location that stays out of the way of everything else. <laughs> but you kill two birds with one stone. You keep your phone out of your hand and you charge it. So as you guys can see in the back seat, the climate control is not nearly what it is in that aviator, but it's still very nice. It's easy to use. All we have is climate and heated seats. There's no radio controls or anything like that. In addition, we have our uh, USB, USB-C, and our standard AC outlet. Alright guys, we are going to go parking spot hunting. Let's see if we can get it to work. We've tried it a couple times and <laughs> it seems to be hit or miss when you get it to work. So I haven't looked up the criteria on how you actually make it work. However, let's give it a shot. Buttons down here by the mode. You turn on your turn signal to initiate which side you want to park on. Oh, and now it's telling us a spot is found. I'm going to put the car into neutral. Release brake to start the park hold. I have released the brake and I am going to hold down the park. Here we go. Hands are off the wheel. I'm holding down that park button. The 360 camera is illuminated. This is so weird. But look at that. Hello, driver's test. <laughs> do we get it the first try or do we have to keep going? Huh? Huh? We're going forward now to readjust. Finished! Like a glove. There's that rear drive bias <laughs> drivetrain, guys. You can get a little squirrely a little easier than a previous Explorer, right? <laughs> I have to say, I'm a fan of what Explorer has going on. This isn't the ultimate performance SUV yet. I fully anticipate if they keep on this track, if that Ford Performance team and the engineers stay on this track, that in another year or two, this Explorer ST is going to be a real animal to drive. <laughs> I find it very ironic that uh, 
it's not really ironic, that's probably the wrong way to say it, but for the forward collision assist feature that the Explorer has, we are constantly reminded that there is a Mustang in front of us. Obviously, as we get closer to the vehicle in front of us, that will turn red or gray or go away if there isn't an issue. But regardless of the vehicle in front of you, there's always a Mustang just over the next hill. I don't know how well the video is picking up the engine note in the cabin here, but what I can assure you is it does have a performance-oriented tone to it. it. It's a nice, uh, uh, it's a good mix between aggressive, uh, but not like overbearing by any means. The exhaust note isn't very aggressive but as you drive it it's all about driving experience guys it doesn't really matter what the people on the outside here in my opinion they do a great job of making this three row suv an enjoyable sporty feel it's very broad there's no denying that it's a big car but boy they did a great job of the way it handles the way it brakes the way it accelerates well done Great redesign. <laughs> They're gonna make a killing on these ST Explorers. All right, Todd, let's wrap up this video here on the Explorer ST. What do you think of this thing? I'm a fan, I have to be honest. Uh, I don't want to get hate mail or anything, but I haven't been a massive Ford fan for quite a while. I've always had a thing for their Super Duty trucks because they're like the trucks you can't break. True. But uh, uh, as far as their everyday driving cars, their Explorers and Escapes and yada, yada, yada down the list, <laughs> I haven't been a huge fan. Well, that's because we're not really fans of anything that's not performance cars. I mean, that's kind of... Uh, I, yeah. I appreciate good design and whatnot. But regardless, that's where we're at now. Ford's Ford's turning uh, to a new page, and they're now ahead of the game yeah. uh, in, in the design and the tech they're putting in, uh, both inside and outside. Big fan. I think this is a well-done car. I think the Explorer, obviously, it's had a a huge following since uh what was it the early 90s i believe when the explorer officially first came out mm -hmm. <laughs> i learned how to drive a stick in a two-door i think it was a 91 two-door sport explorer nice, so nice. explorer and that name has been out forever yeah what's crazy is the uh i think the actual chief engineer of the explorer like it's been his baby for over a decade it's not that often in the auto industry nowadays that someone is staying on yeah. the same project. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and he, he, he cares about this. I mean, I read a, an interview with him where he physically went to Home Depot and just watched people, watched how they were loading stuff, not only the Explorer, but the competition. And one thing he saw uh, on a regular basis is that people couldn't fit a four foot uh, sheet of plywood into the back. They'd go inside all frustrated marching and they'd have to get it cut down. So they made the tailgates on the new Explorer big enough to accept that four foot piece of plywood. So it's stuff like that that's pretty neat. You know, and he's out at the gas station, so he'll go, hey, nice looking car. Well, what do you like? What do you dislike? Stuff like that. So they're getting real world yeah. feedback from consumers, that's which I brilliant. think is important. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. What else you got? Anything? Uh, what else do I got? Uh, yeah, definitely did a great job on the interior. They've uh, Ford's lacked that in the past with the very cheap feeling interiors, and uh, I'm not getting that feeling at all from this. They are not high quality materials by any means, but nicely laid out of the materials that they used. Uh, the steering wheel's sweet. The exhaust tone's nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice. I think it's, it's a, for yeah, sure. it's a good combo of different textures, different colors. There, yeah. there is some uh, leather or leather feeling material throughout it's not like the aviator by any means that oh thing's, no that thing's oh that covered. thing's also yeah. another 40 30 40 grand yeah right? 30 what was this one 45 or something uh no, or no this is over 50 this isn't one's it 58 yeah wow geez it's pricey yeah 
But in this segment, everything's expensive now. If you want something that's got performance, if you want something that's yeah. got all the modern tech, yep. <laughs> it's not that it's overpriced, it's just everything's expensive now. Oh yeah, yeah, you're getting a lot of stuff for that price. I mean, there's a lot of R&D in this car, there's no doubt about that. For sure. And that's usually what you're paying for in most vehicles. So uh, yeah, I think that sums up today's review. If you guys liked, please comment down below and like it and subscribe. subscribe. Love to hear if we're doing something right or something wrong. We also love to talk cars. We'll talk soon. See you guys. I, uh, I think that we need to give a thank you. To, uh, what do you think? Oh, I got an idea. Let's thank Inver Grove Ford Lincoln for being absolutely amazing. Guys, we have been talking to them. We've been working with them. They are so laid back, yet they care about what they're doing. They just want to help. They want to make sure you have the right info. They're actually the 2019 dealership of the year in Minnesota. They went on to compete nationwide. They didn't get those honors, but still, other dealers are voting for the uh, dealership of the year, and that's who was chosen, part of the Saxon Auto Group. They're located in Invergrove Heights. It's only about 10 minutes from the airport, from the Mall of America. Guys, fly in, purchase with them, have a fun drive home in your new ride. We are so appreciative that you took the time to watch the video. If you're still watching, we like you that much more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you soon.